Following back-to-back -back bowl wins in 2012 and 13, the Syracuse Orange took a bit of a step back or a couple steps back in winning just one game in the ACC last season. Is there hopes that that was an aberration and the program is still headed in the right direction? We bring in John Casillo of Noon's Magician to break down the Orange with Syracuse wrapping up spring practice, the spring game coming up on April 4th. Hey, John, how are you? Doing well, Mark. How about yourself? Doing just fine. Let's talk some offense first and set it up with uh, new offensive coordinator Tim Lester, who was with the the staff uh, last season and, and uh, heads into his first full ride as offensive coordinator. So your thoughts about offensive personnel at this point? Sure. Uh, I, I think a lot of people, you know, uh, were shocked to see George McDonald demoted um, midseason last year. It's not something that typically happens for a coordinator at the collegiate level. Um, and, and to see that go down, to see Lester come up from the quarterback coach position, uh, people were excited about what was going to happen next. Uh, we were tired of, you know, uh, bubble screens with no blockers downfield, things like that, that would just continually happen under McDonald. Lester didn't really change much last year. He just kind of tried to figure out what worked with the personnel, so even said specifically that did not implement his offense whatsoever. So... We haven't seen what his offense looks like at a D1 level, only at a D3 level. So it's going to be very, uh, I guess, interesting to see how things develop, and especially during the spring game where, unlike usual, where it's your typical, you know, toss it around the yard and entertain the fans for a little bit, I think Syracuse fans uh, come next weekend are really going to be uh, chomping at the bit to see some actual results and some actual change from the game plans that have uh, failed in the past. Identities, uh, a term that's used in football from time to time that I think is overplayed, uh, but for a team that won three games, one in conference last season, that, uh, again, is trying to recapture the fan base, what, what would you think would be the identity of the offense? It sounds like, uh, apparently, you're looking for that answer to be, to be uh, delivered in, in the next couple weeks and in looking at the spring game, but uh, what, what do you think, uh, what, what kind of personnel stand out to you on offense that, that you're looking forward to seeing uh, uh, coming up on Saturday? I think for the most part, uh, people are looking for, for a game plan that's going to utilize um, the running backs in particular. Last year we had five, um, and they were not really utilized. We only had, I believe it was two running back touchdowns the entire season. So this year, um, with only two of those guys back, Devontae McFarlane and uh, George Morris, uh, people are really looking for uh, Tim Lester's offense to utilize them well and also utilize what seems like it's going to be a two tight end set, um, though not in the traditional sense. Uh, it seems that what we're doing is uh, just going to play on the idea of multiplicity, try to just get as many of the, the best playmakers on the field um, at one time, regardless of uh, what position they may traditionally play. So you could see, you know, uh, whether it's guys like Ashton Broyled and, and Brisley Esteem who, who may seem redundant of one another um, on the field at once uh, just to kind of create mismatches for defense. Uh, guys like Ben Lewis that can really kind of shift in our H-back, which is more of a slot receiver role um, to wide receiver. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see how we use Steve Ishmael, who uh, I wouldn't call it a breakout campaign last year as a freshman, but definitely was uh, one of the very few bright spots that you can point to just uh, a real great downfield playmaker, and considering what he was dealing with, you know, four different quarterbacks, the fact that he was still able to make plays, um, catch several deep balls, uh, lead the team in uh, touchdowns, definitely, definitely uh, one to watch come spring and then into the fall. John, of course, it's a defense that was put in a poor position uh, repeatedly by the offense. Uh, you lose the defensive line, completely wiped out. Uh, you're a bit thin in even the play... Uh, the players that you bring back along the front defensively. So set up the defense for us as we uh, look towards Saturday. Sure. Uh, for the most part, uh, it's really going to be a bunch of guys who got some limited time um, due to injuries last year, uh, but still now have a chance to show themselves as not, you know, not just injury stop gaps, but real bona fide starters who fortunately or unfortunately, don't have a lot of challengers. I mean, Ron Thompson, Isaiah Johnson, uh, two guys who are probably going to bookend this line. Thompson uh, really played well um, in some special packages last year, and it's going to be interesting to see um, how he responds to being, you know. Um, last year we had Eric Kroon, who was a great run stuffer at the defensive tackle position. Uh, this year it looks like a combination of a 
John Raymond, um, Kate and Samuels, and uh, Chris Clayton. They're probably going to uh, Slayton. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, that are probably going to plug in at the defensive tackle spot, at least for now, uh, but could have some some additional help coming in um, with the new 2015 recruits come this summer. John Casillo joins us uh, talking Syracuse football from Noon's Magician. Uh, John, so um, April 4th uh, is the spring game. I don't know how much uh, legitimate, uh, valid information you've received from spring camp. Uh, sometimes it's just kind of a guessing game until you actually see the spring game played as to uh, changes of personnel, uh, what guys are getting more attention in playing time, and, and what schematic changes have taken place, but uh, what are your thoughts about what's happened thus far uh, in spring practice and what you would like to see on Saturday to, to culminate uh, the spring session? I think what's going to be big for everyone uh, is a stress on the running game to see exactly what this remade defense is going to be able to do, and obviously with limited uh, hitting and tackling involved. Uh, but to be honest, one name we didn't even bring up yet was uh, Terrell Hunt, uh, the quarterback, Got injured last season, uh, definitely was supposed to kind of guide things and steady the ship last year uh, with some younger pieces in the offense. So now that he's back, he's taking snaps, um, it's, it's going to be good to see what he can do um, in his first, you know, any sort of action in, uh, in at this point, like six months. So I, I think fans are going to be very keenly aware, because he's already been given the starting job, uh, going to be very keenly aware and, and, and uh, very quick to, to judge positively or negatively uh, what he does under center. All right. As we've discussed a number of times, John, a tough uh, road to hoe there in the ACC, specifically in the division with Louisville, Clemson, and Florida State. Hopefully we can catch up uh, uh, sometime in the summer and set things up for uh, for the fall. Appreciate uh, John Casillo joining us from uh, Noon's Magician. Thank you so much, John. Thanks, Mark.